five o'clock. I guess we're rocking and rolling, right? It looks like you guys can hear me. I heard some, yeah, we can hear you. Good, thank you for the feedback. Um, there's a little bit of a latency here. I've set the latency to be kind of high, so if you've got a, a not a great internet connection, you should be okay. And hopefully my internet connection stays all right throughout this too. I've got a house full of kids who are probably streaming all kinds of stuff right now. Wish me luck. Okay, so here is a blank ArcGIS Pro project. Let me first give you some context for what I'll be talking about in the next half hour. Okay, so this image on the left is uh, like a, a typical traditional hill shade. One kind of light orientation casting an impossibly straight beam of photons against the surface of the earth. It's a very simple algorithm. It's actually very beautiful, but I'm gonna show you how to layer up different uh, techniques and in, including one hack to make this hillshade on the right. So this is the same place, just traditional hillshade and then this kind of smooth, sharp hillshade that I'll talk about. Now, uh, when I look at real world topography, I, I like to think, so I, I put on my reverse engineer goggles and say, gosh, this is a really realistic looking image, even though it's real. But I think if this weren't real, what would make it convincing and real? And I look at this and I think, okay, well, the lower elevations in this canyon are just overall darker because they're only ambiently illuminated by bouncing light. In, like, no direct light is getting in there. It's only by soft, indirect light bouncing around in, in the darker, deeper canyons. Now, here's another example. It's beautiful. Uh, what's that? Horse head bend or something like that. Uh, and what I notice here is that the sunlit slopes um, really only get bathed in direct light at the higher elevations. Okay, and the lower elevations don't get that direct sunlit nature. That's interesting too. This is, man, this is a beautiful scene. Alexander took this picture. I got all these pictures on unsplash.com, by the way. It's a great resource. Um, so let's look at this. What's going on here? What do I notice about something like this with my reverse engineer goggles? Uh, I see that the, the steep slopes, um, they have both crisp light and shadow effects, but also kind of hazy uh, light and shadow effects. It's like I've got multiple scales going on in my fake hill shade, even though this is real life. But that's because things are bouncing around and we're looking at things through an atmosphere. Uh, here's the last example I've got. This is Bryce Canyon. My brother is named after this hole in the ground. And uh, what do I notice about something like this? my eyes catch on the stratified layers or abrupt shifts in steepness. Here it is in color. You can kind of see these very horizontal bands of geologic stratification. And when it goes black and white, it's a little bit lost. And so that tells me like my brain wants to see edges. It wants to see right angles in the terrain. So maybe there's some hack we can do, wink, wink, to get there. What I'm going to try to replicate, but not actually do, just replicate the effect of, is called ambient occlusion. And this is just a Google image search for ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion um, tries to uh, make the, the light and shadow characteristics softer and more realistic because, you know, you've got corners that go progressively darker and it's just not either illuminated or not illuminated, right? So it's not an abrupt shade on, shade off kind of algorithm. It takes a bunch of different sample locations and um, interpolates where the light may or may not be weaker and stronger and getting reflected. And frankly, it's pretty computationally expensive and has to take a lot of sample points to calculate and can be rather slow um, unless you do weird hacks like I do. So let's start with Derek Watkins's awesome tool that he made available to the universe. It's this website here dwtkns.com and it's srtm 30 meter downloads i um i'm gonna fly by the seat of my pants i haven't tested this area yet but i think lake powell might be a pretty cool place to test so i'm gonna download this blip and sign in so really what he's got is a ui proxy for nasa data so NASA, God bless them, they have amazing data, but it's not always very straightforward how to 
actually access their stuff. Derek Watkins kind of stepped in and said, check this out. And I'm very grateful to him for that. And the result is this HGT image format. So let's open ArcGIS Pro. I'll be doing this in ArcGIS Pro. Let me get my download folder. And I'm gonna copy this and drop this into my data. So if my data folder ever dies, I'm just toast. I've got a DEM folder, SRTM, uh, shuttle radar topography mission or something like that. Um, I'll call this Lake Powell. I'll paste my download right there. 25 megs, drop it in here. And there it is. Okay, good. Lake Powell is going to be cool. I can tell already. Now, by default, we're in a WGS 84 plat car equirectangular projection. We can do better than that. Um, some people say this is unprojected, although technically it's projected. If you're seeing it flat, it's a projection. And I'm going to look at the coordinate system for this and change it to USA contiguous Elbers equal area conic and see how it's all sideways like that that's because it's made for the whole United States 48 the lower 48 anyway so let me get to the center point of this and I'll notice that my western longitude is negative uh, 110 and a half so I'm going to come back here into the properties of my map and change this I'm going to modify this projection so that the central meridian is negative 110.5 and then I'll hit okay that should straighten it out that looks a lot better okay let's let's get uh well first of all let's get blurring so my first step here is to um open the geoprocessing tools and make progressively blurred versions of this essentially i'm doing generalization but instead of removing vertices from a vector uh, i'm blurring my raster and that's that's generalization of a sort so i'm going to use a tool obviously called focal statistics because why wouldn't you call a blurring tool focal statistics this uh the focal statistics tool is avail available in a couple different licenses it's not in the base level, so it's included in, in one of the extras licenses, sorry. Okay, so input raster, I'll choose this. And my output raster, I'm gonna point to that same data folder. Elevation models, SRTM, Lake Powell, I'm gonna make a new folder called blurred. And I'm gonna blur this thing uh, seven pixels seven pixel radial blur give it a circle neighborhood and i'll say blur within seven mean is fine and i'll run it i'll cross my fingers okay so i'm going to zoom to the source res resolution of my original this is the data i downloaded and here's the blurred version original blurred you can see it's a little bit fuzzier if you're watching me on YouTube which of course you are watching me on YouTube there's a little gear at the bottom of the screen uh, maybe by default it's giving you a, a lower resolution if you click that gear you can opt for the highest resolution 10p uh, so consider that if your internet's pretty fast okay so now I'm just gonna do a few versions of this seven uh, next I'm gonna do a 15 pixel neighborhood blur like 15 hit run the tool likes to hang out right around seven talk with its friends have a beer and then go like oh wow i've got work to do and then it'll just zip through the rest just like that okay now here's a 15 pixel blur you can see it's increasingly blurry and if you want to rub your eyes when you're looking at this then you're doing it right and then lastly we'll do a 30 pixel blur there's nothing magical about these uh, blur settings, I'm just pretty much doubling it for three steps of blurriness. So I'll hit run, of course, it likes to hang out at 7%, talk with its friends, have a beer, get carried away, chatting. Oh yeah, I've got a job to do. I'm supposed to be 
running a focal statistic algorithm. Boom. Okay. There is a 30 pixel blur. See how blurry it is? That's great. That's just what we want. So I'll turn this off, this off, this off. See how they got progressively crisper as I went to my original stuff. Now I'm going to rename this original DEM, digital elevation model. And I'll grab these guys and I'm going to group them because I'm so fastidious. I'll call this DEMs. And now I'm going to go to the imagery tab and choose the raster functions tool. Raster functions are this cornucopia of just imagery fun. And there's a category called surface. Therein lies unspeakable pleasures. I'm going to choose hill shade. And I'll point to the original DEM and just say, hey, give me a traditional hill shade. Boom. And that's how fast it is. But there's just something magical about seeing a hill shade rendered so quickly from a digital elevation model. It's just beautiful. But um, if we're being honest, it could be a little bit more beautiful, right? It's, it's a little too crisp and frankly impossible. You know, the bottom of this canyon is getting direct sunlight, even though this is very high. And in real life, the shadow would fall over here and you wouldn't see a lot of this brightness. So we'll start addressing that. So here's a hill shade on the original. Let me change the style of this. And yeah, I'm going to calculate statistics on this layer. You're going to see me do that a lot in this demo. Calculate statistics, calculate statistics. So let's change this. We're just going to start adding up shade. So by default, it's black to white, but I'm going to make it black to fully transparent black. See that little checkerboard pattern getting revealed behind the scenes there? Fully opaque black to fully transparent black. And then we'll hit OK. And I'll turn off my original DEM. OK. Let's soften this a little bit because I'm going to be starting to stack up a bunch of hill shades. So instead of 100% opaque black, I'm going to make it to 60% transparent. You can tell by my tentative tones that I'm just kind of winging this. You know, there's not a science to this. It's def Well, there's a definite science to this, but that's not me. There's an art to it when you apply the science. So I'm like 60% opaque to fully transparent. Let's go with that. Okay, so let's go back here and we'll calculate yet another hill shade. This time we'll calculate a hill shade on my slightly blurry elevation model. See how it's kind of a blurry hill shade there? You wanna rub your eyes, that's right. That means we're doing it right. I'll make this fully transparent black. And of course, I'll make this 60% transparent black. So we're, we're starting to layer in shadows of increasing generalization. Just like real life, you know, this is how real life works. Hill shade, I'm going to do the 15 pixel version. And I'll crank out a hill shade for him it's so fast. And I'm going to do the same thing. Fully transparent black. 60% transparent black. So we're stacking up these layers of hill shade. It's a, it's a subtractive process. I'm only painting pixels where there's shade, not where there's direct light as a result of the algorithm. Now, lastly, I'll bring in this hill shade and I'll apply it to my third, my really blurred 30 pixel blur hill shade. Now this should be offensive to our eyes almost. It's great. We're doing it right. And I'll make this fully transparent black. And this guy, I'll make 60% transparent black. Okay, same thing. Now they're all kind of adding up on top of each other. Now you can see the result is almost like, uh, it kind of reminds me of when I'm in the ocean and I've got like a snorkel mask on and the salt water just makes my eyes blurry and, and the snorkel mask is blurry because of the salt. And I'm just not seeing totally clearly. It's a long day, right? It's not impossibly crisp. It's a little bit diffuse, just like in real life. So that's the effect I was going for. I'm going to group these guys together and call them. I'm never this organized, only when I demonstrate. I'm going to call this hill shade. Okay. Now here's where we get some interesting... Um, everybody can do this, right? Uh, everybody can do the next step too, but 
it's it's kind of different and it's a lot of fun. I'm going to start playing with the slope algorithm. So slope takes a look at the elevation model and says, hey, here's how steep it is. And it paints in by default white, bright white for areas where it's really steep and black for areas where it's really flat. Frankly, that's the exact opposite of what I want. So I'm going to reverse that or not, not really reverse it, but say only so areas of steepness make it fully black, blacker than black more black and uh, areas where it's flat no black and now we've got something really cool isn't that beautiful just immediately there's this scent like if this ethereal sense of something that's tactile and has texture i want to squeeze it and push it around it's great uh slope have fun with slope it's so um ignored this guy named sean flanagan sean flanagan i think that's his name it's not Flanagan. I'm a terrible person. Anyways, he's a student at Humboldt State, and he was telling me about how fun it is to use the slope function for creating topography. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Maybe I'll give it a shot. And he was right. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so let's start doing this for our increasingly blurred elevation models. I'll do this for the seven pixel blur. Oops, I picked tail shade. I'll pick slope. And I'll point it at my seven pixel blur. And again, I'm just going to start walking up that list. I'll format my color scheme so that this is black to fully transparent black. But now I'm going to weaken this a little bit. I'm going to say 60% transparent again. It's easy to remember if I use the same number every time. Let's do a third slope. This time with my 15 pixel blur, I'll hit OK. And you can see, you know, it's just a blurrier version of that first thing. OK, I'll format this color scheme so it's black 60% to fully transparent black where it's flat. And we're stacking up shades of slopedness. And then lastly, we'll get my last slope in here. We'll point to this crazy bananas, 30 pixel blur, digital elevation model. We'll create a slope map from that, which looks like this. And we'll tweak that color scheme real quick, which is a thing Midwestern people say real quick, 60% real quick. And I'll make this 100% transparent real quick. I hit OK. And now I've... I've got all these layers that are at, look how many hill shades. I've got one, two, three, four hill shades. I've got four, so I've got eight layers of algorithmically derived uh, shadow content. There's no rule that says you have to do it all in one go, right? I'm just layering all these people up on each other, but it's very subtractive. And every time I add a layer, I'm removing a little bit of that white background. And when I pan and zoom, you can actually kind of, you can see it. Um, start to, to build up and that's kind of a fun process but uh, like it's blurry and, and I've removed all of the, the brightness and the direct light so let's bring some of that back in so I'm gonna go back to my hill shade I'll point to my original crisp elevation model I'll just choose traditional and hit OK and this should look pretty familiar it's the one we started out with but let's change this color scheme and make it transparent white to fully opaque white. And we'll just brush the sunlit slopes with this fully opaque white and hit OK and see what this looks like. So we're just feathering in uh, where the sun is hitting those slopes. But remember what I said about those uh, in real life, those uh, terrain in lower elevations doesn't get that direct sunlight. So all we do is we replicate that by dragging this underneath a few of our slope hill shades or of our slope layers so that it's getting occluded by some of those uh, slopey guys and it's uh, it's more realistic that way we're nesting it okay we're making really good progress frankly we're making too good of progress I've got 10 whole minutes left 
and but I haven't even showed you my hack yet. So here's the hack. Uh, if there's one thing that you remember from what I'm showing you today, it's please use tools for purposes that they were not built for. So what I'm going to do now is use a hill shade on a slope. Nobody intended for hill shade to be used on a slope. They designed it to be used on an elevation model. But I was thinking, if slope is saying how rounded something is, if I apply a hill shade to that, and it's kind of hard to wrap your brain around it, but if I apply a hill shade to a slope, it should almost boost the contrast of areas with kind of a corner or a ridge or geograph geologic stratification or like a river's edge. It should make things crisp along the sharp edge. Um, and there's there's a, an official way of doing something like that, and it's called curvature. And curvature is pretty hard and computationally expensive, and you can't really control the direction of it. But you can control the direction of a hillshade, and if you apply a hillshade to a slope, you've got curv curvature with a steering wheel. So let's do some curvature on a, with a steering wheel. So I'm going to do a traditional hillshade pointed at a slope. So let me, where's my slope? Okay, uh, where's my slopes? Okay, so, yes, slope, seven pixel. So I'm doing a hill shade on a slope. And the result looks like weird, right? Like, kind of like those petri dishes where those little worms kind of crawl through it or something. I don't know, it's, it's bizarre. It's almost like an emboss feature. So let's really quickly, real quick, see Midwestern. Let's real quick update this color scheme and get rid of the neutral midtones and say, you're gonna, we're only gonna retain the white edges. I'm gonna make this transparent white. And over here, I'll make this fully transparent black to black. So. Everywhere where there's gray, we're just going to get rid of that and look through it to our underlying hillshade layers. And okay, and cross our fingers. Okay. Let's bring in a little bit more white. Okay. Now we're getting kind of a boost on any geologically stratified feature or edge of something. And Oh, I never did a slope on my just raw. Let me back up. I'm going to do, I should have done before doing a slope to my blurred things. I should have done a slope to the original crispy uh, DEM. Let me just do that real quick. So I'll do a slope on the original DEM. Okay, that's here. And he lives way down here. Oh no, slope, no. Okay, never mind. I had already done that. I just couldn't find it. It's called slope underscore original DEM. Okay, so let's now do, okay, forget I said everything over the last 30 seconds. Now I'm going to do another hill shade on a slope, but I'm going to do it to that original crispy one. So I'm going to do hill shade, and I'm going to point it at the, why am I having her such a slope? Yes, the slope applied to the original DEM. I hit apply. Okay, and I get those little worm trails, which is a really creepy way of describing it. I understand that. But that's just what it looks like to me. And I'll add, I'll retain only the lights and the darks. So I'll fully transparent white to white and black to fully transparent black. Hit OK. Okay, now we're getting something pretty crispy. Let me pull a little bit more white in here. Okay. Now, I'll zoom to the source resolution. So I'll zoom here. You can see them all kind of paint in layer by layer. Now see, see this river, how it's got a very distinct edge? I'm really lying to you. Because if I turn these two off, right, it, you can see the river, but it's not crisp 
there's not quite as distinctive an edge. You can see these geologic terraces, but they aren't terribly crispy. Um, but if I turn on this hack slope or a hill shade on a slope, it creates this artificial ridge, which helps me tease out geologic stratification and river edges, bodies of water, that sort of thing. And it's really pretty interesting. Now, the last thing I want to show you in Pro is, um, remember how I said that lower elevation areas were just darker because of ambient occlusion? You've got lower areas, they're just not getting as much light and the light that they do get is diffuse. So I'm going to bring my original elevation model back up to the top. I'll turn it on and I'm going to change its formatting or its uh, color scheme so that it's darker in these lower elevation areas and then fully transparent black in these higher elevation areas. And I'll snug that down just so it hugs the river valleys. Let's make this a little darker just so it's obvious. And I'll hit OK. OK, so now this is like 80% of my ambient occlusion effect is just dragging the original DEM to the top and applying a little bit of a tint to the lower elevation areas that transitions to full transparency at higher elevation areas. Now I get a sense for the overall first order structure of this place. Isn't that fun? Um, it, it, it's quite beautiful, I think. So I'll give you a quick before after. I'll just run another hill shade really quickly on the original elevation model. So effectively, I'm giving you a before after. So this is before with just a traditional hill shade. This is after with the smooth, sharp, hacked ambient occlusion. Before, after, before, after. Isn't that fun? Now, I've exported a few of these and I've exported the imagery. Um, that sits behind them in real life. I've just turned on the imagery base map and exported that because so I've got three minutes left and I want to show you this. It's a lot of fun. So I'm going to open Illustrator. And I'm going to play with blend modes. Blend modes are coming to ArcGIS Online really quickly later this summer. And I can't tell you how exciting it is because I've been kicking the tires on it and playing with it and building use cases around it and testing it. And man, is it fun. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, here's an imagery export of Michigan it's using the same process I did earlier, my beloved home state of Michigan. And I'm navigating by illustrator trick. Press pan to navigate, control, I mean, control space bar to zoom and then just space bar to pan. Anyways, you probably all knew that. And I'll bring in my Michigan hill shade and I'll drop it on top. Okay. Now let's just do a funny blend mode thing where instead of the normal, you know, no blend mode essentially, I'll choose overlay. And you might be thinking, well, what's the big deal? What do you just do? Overlay combines the pixels from these two layers so that here's the original imagery. But if I add this hill shade with an overlay blend with a yeah an overlay blend mode, it kind of paints in this uh, topographic layer. More obvious down here. So before, after, isn't that fun? But it, check this out. If you reverse the order of these two so that the imagery is on top and you choose a blend mode called color. Oh my goodness, you get this marvelous cartographic effect of all the rich tones of the hill shade that we just came up with, the, the smooth, sharp hill shade hack, with hues painted in from the underlying imagery. And I think that's just lovely. And it would have taken me a lot of work to go through all the land cover classification types, but you know what? Imagery, man. Imagery is just there, ready for us. Let's use imagery with a blend mode over hillshade like this with a color blend mode, and you get something really lovely. Hey, I'm at the end of my allotted half hour 
on this earth. Um, I can't multitask very well because my brain is rather weak, but um, man, there's there's probably some questions in there that I missed. I'm sorry if I if I did, but everybody should immediately go check out Kate LaRue's stream about how to 3D print a real freaking map that you can hold in your hand. 3D print topography maps. So go do that. In the description of this YouTube video, I've created a link that'll take you right to Kate's uh, stream. So go check that out right now. Thanks for watching and thanks for Daniel for coordinating all this. I hope everybody's doing well and uh, we'll all get through it eventually. My best to you guys. Thanks. I love you. Goodbye.